Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white Invasion of Segovia tokens deck featuring two copies of Zephyr Singer as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. First let's take a look at our three mana battle. Starts out by making a pair of 1-1 Kraken tokens with Trample and once we transform our battle by dealing four damage to it we get Catus, Sea Tyrant of Segovia, a 3-3 legend saying a non-creature spells we cast have Convoke and at the beginning of our end step untap up to four target creatures. Giving our non-creature spells Convoke is awesome, makes it easy to empty out the rest of our hand, and also plays well with any instance we might have. Since end of turn we get to untap four creatures, we essentially have four mana at instant speed for non-creature spells, can maybe flash in a Wandering Emperor during the opponent's turn, could also make a 2-2 Knight at instant speed with Virtue of Loyalty, and then once we get the enchantment down we can quickly grow our team to overrun the opponent. And then we also have a few counter spells with Make Disappear, which we could also cast the same turn we transform our Invasion of Segovia. Now dealing 4 damage to the battle can be tricky, but we've got a few cards to help out, and Zephyr Singer is one of them. A 3-4 Flyer with Vigilance and Convoke, so we can potentially tap the two 1-1 one -one Krakens from Invasion of Segovia, and maybe some other white creatures we played earlier, and then get a 3-4 Flyer, which can maybe fly over some blockers to pressure the battle. But when the Zephyr Singer enters the battlefield, we also get to put a flying counter on each creature that convoked it, so that's why it's ideal to also tap a few blue creatures alongside it, so we can potentially give up to four creatures that fly and counter, and that will make it easy to transform our battle and then completely take over. And then we've got some of the typical token makers. Wedding announcement can also maybe be convoked once we transform our invasion of Segovia, making additional 1 1 tokens, and then eventually giving our team a plus 1 plus 1. Then we also have the full set of Regal Bunnycorn and turn 2 Bunnycorn into turn 3 Invasion of Segovia is one of the better curves of our deck since we will make 2 1-1 one, one tokens, meaning our Bunnycorn grows up to a 4-4, four, four, so it can immediately threaten to transform it if our opponent doesn't have a great blocker back. They either have to chum block or we get to have Catus and then we can take over from there. And then uh, two copies of Adlin, which can also quickly grow by generating all these tokens, so that can also threaten to transform our Invasion of Segovia in a single attack. So often playing Adlin first and then Invasion to kind of surprise transform it is the way to go. And then we can make tokens at instant speed, not only with our Virtue of Loyalty making a Knight, but also with our Resolute Reinforcements making 2-1-1 one, one tokens, so that can gain more life with Veteran. And then by having lots of tokens, we get more out of our Wedding Festivity pumping our team, and our Virtue of Loyalty and Encounters, as well as untapping our team, so that can also generate more mana with Convoke. And then a nice finisher is our Invasion of New Phyrexia, especially if we have Catus in play to help pay for Convoke. We can sink a ton of mana into our Invasion, making lots of 2-2 Vigilant Knights. And then once transformed we get Teferi, which can give us an emblem to pump our Knights, give them Ward 1. So it not only works with the Knights from Invasion of New Phyrexia, but we also get to make Knight tokens with Virtue of Loyalty. So those two have excellent synergy. And then Teferi also gives us a bit of removal with a minus 3, or we can draw 2 and then discard 2 unless we discard a creature card and then we've got our Make Disappear as our counter, can also easily enable Casualty by sacking a random token or maybe a Lunark Veteran and then still bring it back in the form of Luminous Phantom. So that pretty much covers our entire deck. The mana base also has two copies of Merex as another mana sink, so that can also give us more creatures to help with Convoke, or to maybe gain more life with a veteran. And then once we spend our mana activating Merex, we can still often cast something else with Convoke if we've got Catus in play. And then a few dual lands, not maxing out Seachrome Coast, since we do want our lands to be untapped later in the game when trying to cast our more expensive spells. And then of course Soaring City and Iganjo offering a tiny bit more interaction. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. No real way of pressuring our battle early on. But we can eventually go wide enough with our wedding announcements. Keep up our counterspell here. Against Esper Colors. And yeah, let's counter Rona since I'll be tapping out in the foreseeable future. Bunnycorn. That's a way of pressuring our invasion, but I think we still prefer wedding announcements.
So it looks like Asper Legends, Lord Skitter can make tokens as well. Okay, so could also activate Mirex, keep our mana untapped to represent a counterspell. I think I'm going to be better off just deploying Invasion of Segovia. And then next turn we can deploy the Bunnycorn and it's going to be pretty large. Whereas now it's still only going to be a 3-3, uh, three, three, I guess 4-4 four, four once we get an extra token. So it does still survive most removal spells the opponent could have. Just don't need to block with it while I Ganjo is a threat. And then next turn with a large bunny corn, we can maybe transform our invasion of Segovia at once. Yeah, you know what, that seems good enough. Shieldred's a good one. So now they can trade Shieldred for bunny corn and prevent the transformation. Still seems like an okay trade. And then do we do anything else? Could attack with a token just to draw a card. But the tokens are precious when they're about to get plus one plus one. They could also jump with Lord Skitter, I suppose. And the opponent jumps with Skitter. Nope. Goes for the trade. Okay. So end of turn, make another token. And then next turn we'll see if we want to go all out can already cast Invasion for X equals 4. Then it's another good blocker. And they could still have a Channel Land, although now I have my own. So yeah, let's assume our opponent's got their own Iganjo. I attack all out, block, block, take one out. I can still transform Invasion. So it seems worth going for. And then with the extra mana, we can cast a bigger Invasion of New Phyrexia. So, can go to damage, can take out Lord Skitter now. Opponent's gonna bounce their own Lord Skitter, fair enough. So we don't lose our token that they blocked. And then I'll wait until next turn to cast our big invasion. Sadly can't use the tokens to activate Mirex, since it's just Convoke. Ooh, go for the throat. That's too bad. Alright. So now we'll just have to settle for X equals 4. Or maybe cast a Virtue of Loyalty to start bumping the team. That seems better. Now our opponent's likely playing four copies of Virtue themselves. Now our Fiend can fly over. So our opponent's digging. Yeah, trying to block Danik with multiple creatures is a little sketchy if they have more interaction. But of course they can keep growing Danik. And then it's going to be pretty difficult to race. For now we could just take out multiple rats. Yeah, I think that's fine. And then next turn make a lot of knights. Looks like they have maybe one channel land here. And go for the throat. Okay, so kill three rats, go to 12. And another invasion, so we can cast them back to back. This one x equals 4. Question is whether we want to attack, and since we get to untap our creatures, why not? Could have attacked the invasion itself, I suppose. But now our opponent needs to respect more interaction. And then next turn we'll probably attack our battle. Okay, so we've got a massive board state. Flyers are still definitely a concern. 
And now we can look into blocking Danik with multiple creatures. And they've got triple Danik in the graveyard. Okay, so let's say we put two creatures in front of Lord Skitter to try and take it out. We'll make it our Vigilant Knights. Then I can then triple block Danik. So one removal spell is not enough. And our opponent only has one card in hand. And then block the rats. That looks okay. Opponent's got an Iganjo. But still two tokens left over to finish off Danik. We fall to seven. So yeah, opponent's still threatening lethal with Rafine. And now another flyer. But we can attack our invasion. And once we get to Ferry, we can minus and then get rid of Rafine for starters. So opponent's got one blocker, three knights are enough. Am I going for another invasion of New Phyrexia? So let's read Teferi carefully. So we can tap any number of untapped creatures, which would be three knights. And then get rid of Rafine, paying the ward still. So I could cast another invasion, x equals three. But there's no point in having two Teferis. So yeah, let's just attack. I think we still go for Invasion X equals 3 to put more power and toughness in play. Untap our team. Their so opponent can put us to 4 here and then face lethal on the way back. Sweet, very close one here against Asper Legends. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn two, make a knight. Turn three, perhaps go for wedding announcement first. Up against the red aggro. Don't have the best hands, no turn one veteran. But eventually Wandering Emperor can gain some life back. Turn two, scoundrel. Deciding what to do here. Goes for a treasure. And a monstrous rage. Okay, so we're taking six here. Can make a knight token at least. And then now Adlin on three has a decent blocker. Play with fire and land, although it is foundry, so they can't play with fire here. So it's probably a good opportunity to trade for scoundrel. So we don't take as much damage. Play the coast while it's untapped, and then Adlin versus Wedding Announcement. Probably go for Adlin, and then Double Emperor gives us a decent chance. Could see Double Burn spell take care of the four toughness creature. I will not be blocking if they attack. Okay. So take four, presumably. Just a one. So are they not playing Play with Fire then? It's just going to be a second main Godric, fair enough. They could have tried to maybe get an attack in, but now they can block the 1-1 one, one token. So sure, we'll uh, play Deserted Beach, attack. There's no downside. And if they block Adlin, we can actually finish off Godric with Wandering Emperor, giving us a plus one counter. They're gonna block the token instead. And then we'll hang on to Emperor to finish off Godric, assuming they can give it flying here. All-out attack. 
So deciding what to block, if anything. If I block Godric, we can maybe bait out a trick and then punish them, exiling Godric anyway. Could also block Foundry and then just go for a plus one counter on Adlin and Aetherland, which I also don't hate. And then next turn I can exile Godric because they might have another play with fire, but then they probably would have just double play with fire at last turn to kill Adlin. So it's a monstrous rage. So now I have to decide if I want to just exile their creature and then decide between Swiss Spear and Godric, since Godric will get a bit bigger here, unless we exile Swiss Spear now. So maybe that's the play. Exile Swiss Spear, Godric doesn't get the monster roll token. So it only hits us for three, and then Adlin survives. Okay, and then could cash an Emperor for another knight and play Virtue. Seems like a good use of our mana. Even though we don't deal with Godric right now. I don't think we'll be in danger of dying next turn. And then now we've got a pretty nice board state. Okay, Scoundrel making treasure or wicked roll will enable flying. They might have mistapped if they wanted to fire breathe Godric, they could have gotten an extra point of damage in. So we're at three. But we've got a bit of life gain ready to go. So attack all out. Probably go for tapped Seacrum Coast. Exile Godric right away. So we don't lose to a lightning strike. Bone and chumps. And then next turn we should have lethal. Stoke the Flames, I guess, would kill me, but not a commonly played card in Monored. So yeah, opponent had the Lightning Strike, we go to one. But the four life gains made the difference. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a promising hand. Bunnycorn into Invasion of Segovia is one of our better starts, since we'll have a 4-4 attacking the battle to try and transform it right away. Just good to hope Bunnycorn survives. Against Red Black, that's not a guarantee, so could also go for end of turn Virtue, then play Adlin, and kind of play it slow. That might be safer. Just so at least the Bunnycorn doesn't die to a cut down or a Virtue of Persistence. Turn two Harvester. So yeah, Bunnycorn could have worked out, but they might have gone for a different line. So now. Could go for Adlin, or can play the invasion anyway. Adlin attack all out, opponent blocks the 1-1, takes 2, then they may be able to kill Adlin in their turn. Still probably the best we can do here. Still survives cutdown and Virtue of Persistence, but they might be able to combine a removal spell with a Harvester to finish off Adlin. Next turn we can double spell Bunnycorn and another Knight. If they have a Liliana or some other Edict, they can clean up by killing the 2-2 with Harvester. It's gonna be a Godric instead. Okay, so more of an aggressive deck. So they could kill Adlin if I double block here, but then we would also take out Godric, and our opponent cannot take out both creatures if I double block and take out Godric if they put Knight first. Adlin only has one damage. So I imagine our opponents going for Adlin, but then they would lose both creatures. Which still seems like a decent trade. So our opponents not sacking the Harvester, just letting Godric go. Okay, so now if I go for Invasion of Segovia, opponent will have to chump to prevent it from transforming. And that's where we want to be. So that looks good. Token goes after the opponent, I guess. We don't have a choice. We do get to transform. 
Okay, so now with Catus in play, we can still play 5 mana Virtue of Loyalty and then uh, get to untap our creatures. And that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand seems keepable. Turn 2, make a knight. Turn 3, invasion. And then we can convoke Zephyr Singer to help transform Invasion of Segovia. And that'll make it easy to cast our Virtue of Loyalty. Opponent blue-white, but looks like soldiers. I'm right, gonna hope to dodge turn to Thalia, since our deck's not very well equipped to deal with it right now. Would make all our spells more expensive. Frontliner is acceptable. And another invasion, so let's get that down. Hit it for two. And then next turn I could play another Invasion of Segovia and then Convoke Singer giving all the 1-1s one flying. Or maybe the Knight still. Opponent jumping, okay. Don't mind seeing that. Possible our opponent was playing around a counter spell and didn't play Thalion too. But they've got a Sky Strike now. Okay, decent blocker. Can also block our flyers. So that's annoying. But I think it's worth it to get the Zephyr Singer in play. And then, yeah, play another invasion in the process. I think I just tap all the 1-1s one since the knight still doesn't attack past the officer. And then if they don't have removal or another flyer, should be able to transform invasion. And then we've got our new Phyrexia ready to go. Sadly, Brutal Cathar. It's gonna mess with that plan. Can still remove three loyalty off an invasion. And Adlin is an extra attacker. So yeah, go for Adlin, attack all out, seems reasonable. And then they've got one profitable block, and that's enough for a concession. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has potential, especially if Bunnycorn survives and we can play turn 3 Invasion. Since then we'll have a 4-4 attacking it. Turn 1 Officer, so white aggro. Okay, still waiting for a land number 3. Thalia can also slow things down. For now Vanguard. And it can present a lot of power and toughness themselves. So I don't have a third land yet, so we're not guaranteed to play Invasion of Segovia next turn, although any land drop will do it. So the question is whether I keep up my counter spell to counter potential Thalia, or uh, Adlin I guess would be even worse. But I think I just have to commit the Bunnycorn and try and make this invasion plan work. Because that's the only way we can catch back up, otherwise we're just going to be too far behind. It's going to be a hopeful initiate. If they have another one drop, they could trade for Bunnycorn, even if it's a 4 4. And they're gonna leave Officer back. Nope, still attacking. I think we gotta take it. And we found the land, perfect. So we get to live the dream here. 4 4 Bunnycorn, opponent could jump if they want to. Now our 1-1s can trade for Officer. And then I'll get to keep up a counter spell thanks to Convoke. So that was a huge swing. Okay. Katus online. Can untap Bunnycorn as well, so we can even cast our 2 2 Knight from Virtue. And then next turn cast our Enchantment as well. So now we're in the driver's seat. Well, it's got an ossification that's not going to resolve. Yeah, once we get the sea tyrant going, our deck looks pretty busted. Don't think they have any great attacks. 
So now we essentially get to untap with 8 mana, picked up another Virtue. So I could potentially tap the creature I play this turn. So we could go for another Virtue making a Knight, play Bunnycorn, and cast the Enchantments. Although, never mind, I guess we should have played Bunnycorn first, because we cannot cast creatures with Convoke, only non-creature spells. So we'll send in the Bunnycorn, maybe the Knight. Although if they trade, I would be short on white mana to cast a Virtue. So I'll just send in the Bunnycorn. Probably should have even played Virtue before attacking to get one more damage in. But yeah, at this point, we can't really mess it up too badly. We're super far ahead. Also could have used Virtue during the opponent's turn to make a Knight if we wanted to. Since uh, we'll have a bunch of unspent mana now that we're out of instance to play. So definitely could have sequenced this turn a bit better. Now we've got another Virtue of Loyalty coming up. Also Vacation. Could go after Arcatus, but Bunnycorn's just bigger. And uh, yeah, let's play the Bunnycorn. Can attack pretty much all out, unless we want to do this first. Play another wedding announcement, or we could attack with the Vigilant Knights first. Although if they trade, I wouldn't be all that happy. I'm glad we get to go off here. Doesn't matter what we untap, since we untap everything anyways. I guess if we had another instant speed play, it could matter, just to be more mana efficient. But now we should be in a position to attack all out pretty easily. Double Virtue of Loyalty against an opponent stuck on three lands. Yeah, this is why so many opponents concede as soon as we transform our Invasion of Segovia. If we had a Wandering Emperor in hand, could still cast it in the opponent's turn. So there's definitely a fine balance between having enough instants so we can kind of convoke during the opponent's turn after untapping. But we also need our deck to be functional when up against the more aggressive red decks, for instance. So only having instant speed plays like counter spells aren't all that great when you're behind. Opponent does have an Adlin. And now a Zephyr Singer as well. Okay, so let's say we send in everyone. Opponent's got four blockers. They have to block Bunnycorn. Two, three, four. Still take 11. And they would all be chum blocks pretty much, except for Adlin. Yeah, that's good enough. But honestly, we could also spend another turn just casting stuff and then set up a clean kill next turn. Could even activate Mirex, then uh, still convoke Wedding Announcement, still convoke Zephyr Singer, since we would have just enough here, and then end of turn, grow the team some more. So, yeah, ridiculousness ensues, and we get to rank up. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with the fine hand. Reinforcements slash make disappear into Adlin. Up against... Turn one mountain. And Swiss spear. Okay, so Adlin's pretty good against mono red. We'll have to wait and see if we want to hang on to make disappear for a potential three drop. All their opponent will get to resolve one of them. Is there any two drop I would counter? Because having Adlin on a three or four power means it's a bit harder for the opponent to attack into compared to a one four. Okay, now with invasion of Segovia. And maybe all the more reason to deploy my creatures and then make disappear as kind of a free counter spell after transforming. Could be nice. Felden, okay. I guess double blocking Swiss Spear is pretty good value. Kind of surprised they're attacking into a potential 2 2 Knight token. But yeah, I'll take this double block. And then Adlin. Gets to make an extra token right away. And then next turn maybe threaten to transform Invasion of Segovia. Charming Scoundrels, fine. Goes for Wicked Roll. Still have to watch out for Play with Fire. Monstrous Rage would 
only add two power to the scoundrels since they only get to keep one roll at once but still enough to kill Adlin. So I think this is a pretty easy just take it since next turn I'll get to play invasion and transform it. Unless they've got a Swiss spear on defense. Okay. They'll still be forced to chum block. So Adlin at the invasion. And then the rest can go face. And then assuming they let the invasion transform, what happens? Then we can still play wedding announcement and still keep up make disappear. That seems pretty awesome. The token from Adlin cannot go after the battle, so opponent does jump. And then now we've got more creatures, so can maybe afford to block with Adlin. It's gonna be Squee, and then essentially the same attack as last turn. So we would be taking seven damage total, plus potentially another three from Monstrous Rage. Down to three. I don't think we can afford that. Now I can block the 1-1, one -one, and then only Monstrous Rage would be enough to finish off Adlin. So I could just block like so. If they Monstrous Rage, we take 6. We do get to transform Invasion. I think that's reasonable. Because if I try and double block a 2-2, two -two, then... We may not have enough to transform Invasion here. Ooh, nice. So, if I transform my Invasion of Segovia, we can still cast Invasion of New Phyrexia for X equals 5. That's pretty powerful, and then still have Make Disappear available in the opponent's turn, thanks to Convoke. And then I can even Convoke Wedding Announcement afterwards. So yeah, that seems more than good enough. Don't need to wait until next turn to cast an even bigger New Phyrexia. Could also hang on to Soaring City as a bounce effect in case a Flying Godric shows up, but they're not all that likely to enable their uh, celebration, so I think it's fine to play it out. Cast a bigger invasion, x equals 5. So, one, two, three, four. Draw a card. Veteran can gain life back. Yeah, we're in the driver's seat. Our opponent attacks all out. So, time to line up some blocks. Can counter unless our opponent pays four, so they could still resolve a one mana spell. And then probably no downside to putting some additional creatures in front here. Trades happen. Felden finds Foundry and Scoundrel. And then sure, let's counter it. Sacrificing a token. Untap. Can play a veteran. And then let's see. Teferi can draw two and then discard two. So we can ditch the land. Then Russ could go face, or we can keep some things untapped for Convoke purposes. Do want to try and close out the game somewhat quickly, so I think Katus is good to go face. And we'll leave some others untapped. And get the ferry. Draw to discard two. And then now other reinforcements can gain us life back with the veteran. And we get to draw with Wedding Announcement. Perfect. 
I guess I forgot one human to untap. That's okay. Opponent with a land. And an Ourobrasks Forge. That's gonna be way too slow here. Make some more tokens. Can uh, make an emblem with the fairy to pump our knights. Yeah, this looks lethal to me. And that does it. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is decent. Turn two can make a knight, turn three Adelin. And then try and convoke Singer to maybe help transform Invasion of New Phyrexia. Put on to red green. Bramble Familiar, okay, so more of a ramp deck. So they can eat the 1-1 one, one token from Adlin. Or they can trade for the knight. And then next turn we're looking at a Convoked Zephyr Singer. Looks like Junt Colors after all, go for the throw it kills Adlin. Okay, that's a setback. So now we don't have a whole lot going on. Attack with a knight, convoke singer. If I invasion x equals 2, I'm one short of convoking singer. But next turn we kind of want to go for virtue of loyalty, so... Attack, see if they trade, but I doubt it. And then convoke singer, second main. Opponent does actually trade. Probably fearing the uh, virtue of loyalty. So now I'm kind of forced to go for invasion x equals 2. Or I can play singer without convoke which is also an option, but at least Invasion into Virtue of Loyalty is a good curve. So now I've got a board state once again. Can expect Shieldred to show up in the near future. Virtue of Persistence. And Bonicorn's not bad. So attack Invasion, play Bonicorn, can still Convoke Singer. That looks good. They are considering another removal spell here. Bunnycorn flies and is out of range from another Virtue of Persistence. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with not the most exciting hand, admittedly. No two drop, but uh, still seems keepable. Okay, now we've got our two drop, so we get to curve out nicely. Bit light on blue creatures, so convoking Zephyr Singer is going to be a bit more challenging. And our opponent on a black green graveyard deck, that's exciting. Okay, so. Pass it back. Plan to make a knight. Turn three announcements. Turn four Zephyr Singer, tapping as many creatures as possible. Finding an invasion of Segovia along the way would help, because then we can give those one ones flying as well. So it looks like uh, maybe Sultai deck. Playing the Somnophage alongside Lurgoyf would make sense. And we can ambush the Prowler, although I'm sure opponent's glad to put an extra creature in Graveyard. And the Gnawing Vermin can give minus one, minus one when it dies. It's going to mill two. Okay, so stick to the plan. Could attack with a Knight. But I'm happy enough just playing the announcement and passing. And then maybe giving the knight flying. Next turn. And then we can fly over while pumping the team with virtue. While we jump on the ground if they present a large Lurgoyf. 
Yeah, opponent is playing Somnophage. Cell Sword, I guess, is a way to sacrifice a huge Lurgoif. So even if it uh, would get chumped, you still have a way to take out the opponent. Yep, yeah, let's go for our Singer. Convoking Knight and Token. Make another 1-1 one, one end of turn. Another Farmer. They also have an Abandoned Mire, which they can use to get back something from Graveyard. Send in the Flyers, so we'll get to draw with Wedding Announcements. And yeah, just go for Virtue, can't do much else. So we are presenting 12 damage next turn in the air. Another wedding announcement's great. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, the flyers are too much for the graveyard deck to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Veteran into Bunnycorn times two, potentially. Although we can expect him to take out the first Bunnycorn pretty easily. Kuman on to. And another Phoenix Jake. Okay, could also Virtue first. Keep up, make disappear, maybe counter a key three drop. Kind of like that. And then we can play Bunnycorn once it's a bit larger, so it doesn't die to a play with fire at least. Yeah, Squeeze, definitely worth countering now. So finding another veteran would be ideal, but not counting on it. Deserted beach. So Bunnycorn versus Make a Knight. Opponent will get Kumano next turn, so we're still definitely on the back foot. Yeah, I guess going for the knight here is fine. And then trade for Kumano. And then next turn double bunny corn, so there are at least three threes. Mechanized warfare. Okay, that's also reason to trade for etching while we can. But now the Phoenix chicks are dealing quite a lot of damage. So double bunny corn, and then next turn either interact with one of our channel lanes or deploy Virtue of Loyalty. Foundry can still trade for a bunny corn right now. But our opponent's got different plans. Yeah, I guess uh, attack with bunny corns. Do we attack with Veteran as well? Probably not. And then if our opponent tries to trade for Bunnycorn, we can Sorting City the Mechanized Warfare. Turn it into kind of an ambush. And if not, play Virtue of Loyalty. Does mean we missed out on a bit of damage, because we could have grown Bunnycorns more. But this seems reasonable. And we're still presenting lethal for next turn. So four in the air. Opponent's got one card left, so we should be safe. And our opponent explodes. All right, so we get to see our blue-white Invasion of Segovia deck in action, and I'm quite pleased with how it performed. Seems like it's got game against a wide variety of matchups, and whenever we start out with a bunny corn or Adlin into an invasion, we can quickly transform it, and once we do, the mana advantage is going to be insurmountable for a lot of decks to deal with. And then having the backup plan of flying over with a Zephyr Singer has also proven to be quite relevant. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.